the first letter of St. Paul, Apostle of Jesus Christ, to the Corinthians, read by David Battistella. Corinthians 1, Chapter 8 Now concerning those things that are sacrificed to idols, we know we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffeth up, but charity edifieth. And if any man think that he knoweth anything, he hath not yet known as he ought to know. But if any man love God, the same is known by him. But as for the meats that are sacrificed to idols, we know that an idol is nothing in the world, and that there is no God but one. For although there be that are called gods, either in heaven or on earth, for there be gods many and lords many. Yet to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we unto him. And one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we are all things, and we by him. But there is not knowledge in every one, for some until this present, with conscience of idol, eat as a thing sacrificed to an idol, and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. But meat doth not commend us to God, for neither, if we eat, shall we have the more, nor, if we eat not, shall we have the less. But take heed, lest perhaps this your liberty become a stumbling block to the weak. For if a man see him that hath knowledge sit at meat at the idol's temple, shall not his conscience, being weak, be emboldened to eat those things which are sacrificed to idols? And through thy knowledge shall the weak brother perish, for whom Christ hath died. Now when you sin thus against the brethren, and wound their weak conscience, you sin against Christ. Wherefore, if meat scandalize my brother, I will never eat flesh, lest I should scandalize my brother. Corinthians 1, chapter 9 Am I not I free? Am not I an apostle? Have not I seen Christ Jesus our Lord? Are not you my work in the Lord? And if unto others I be not an apostle, but yet to you I am. For you are the seal of my apostleship in the Lord. My defense with them that do examine me is this. Have not we power to eat and drink? Have not we power to carry about a woman, a sister, as well as the rest of the apostles and the brethren of the Lord and Cephas? Or I only and Barnabas? Have not we power to do this? Who serveth as a soldier at any time at his own charges? Who planteth a vineyard and eateth not of the fruit thereof? Who feedeth the flock and eateth not of the milk of the flock? Speak I these things according to man? Or doth not the law also say these things? For it is written in the law of Moses, Thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treadeth out the corn. Doth God not take care for oxen? Or doth he say this indeed for our sakes? For these things are written for our sakes, that he that ploweth should plow in hope that he that thrasheth in hope to receive fruit. If we have sown unto you spiritual things, is it a great matter if we reap your carnal things? If others be partakers of this power over you, why not we rather? Nevertheless, we have not used this power, but we bear all things, lest we should give any hindrance to the gospel of Christ. Now you know not that they who work in the holy place eat the things that are of the holy place, and they that serve the altar partake with the altar. So also the Lord ordained that they who preach the gospel should live by the gospel. But I have used none of these things, neither have I written these things, that they should be so done unto me. For it is good for me to die rather than that any man should make my glory void. For if I preach the gospel, it is no glory to me, for a necessity lieth upon me. For woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel." For if I do this thing unwillingly, I have a reward. But if against my will, a dispensation is committed to me. What is my reward then? That preaching the gospel, I may deliver the gospel without charge, that I abuse not my power in the gospel. 
For whereas I was free as to all, I made myself the servant of all, that I might gain the more. And I became to the Jews a Jew, that I might gain the Jews, to them that are under the law, as if I were under the law, whereas myself was not under the law, that I might gain them that were under the law, to them that were without the law, as if I were without the law, whereas I was not without the law of God, but was in the law of Christ, that I might gain them that were without the law. To the weak I became weak, that I might gain the weak. I became all things to all men, that I might save all. And I do all things for the gospel's sake, that I may be made partaker thereof. Know you not that they that run in the race all run indeed, but one receiveth the prize? So run that you may obtain. And every one that striveth for the mastery refraineth himself from all things, and they indeed that they may receive a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible one. I therefore so run, not as at an uncertainty, I so fight, not as one beating the air, but I chastise my body and I bring it into subjection lest perhaps when I have preached to others, I myself should become a castaway. Corinthians 1, chapter 10 For I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that our fathers were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea, and all in Moses were baptized in the cloud and in the sea, and all did eat the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink, and they that drank of the spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Christ. But with most of them God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the desert. Now these things were done in a figure of us, that we should not covet evil things, as they also coveted. Neither become ye idolaters, as some of them, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them that committed fornication, and there fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them tempted and perished by the serpent. Neither do you murmur, as some of them murmured and were destroyed by the destroyer. Now all these things happened to them in figure, and they are written for our correction, upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore he that thinketh himself to stand, let him take heed lest he fall. Let no temptation take hold on you, but such as is human. As God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able, but will make also with temptation issue that you may be able to bear it. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, fly from the service of idols. I speak as to wise men. Judge ye yourselves what I say. The chalice of benediction which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? And the bread which we break, is it not the partaking of the body of the Lord? For we, being many, are one bread, one body, all that partake of one bread. Behold Israel according to the flesh. Are not they that eat of the sacrifices partakers of the altar? What then? Do I say that what is offered in sacrifice to idols is anything, or that the idol is anything? But the things which the heathens sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that you should be made partakers with devils. You cannot drink the chalice of the Lord and the chalice of devils, you cannot be partakers of the table of the Lord and of the table of devils. Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things do not edify. Let no man seek his own, but that which is another's. Whatsoever is sold in the shambles, eat asking no question for conscience sake. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. If any of them that believe not invite you and you be willing to go, eat of anything that is set before you, 
asking no question for conscience' sake. But if any man say, This has been sacrificed to idols, do not eat it for his sake that told it and for conscience' sake. Conscience, I say, not thy own, but the other's. For why is my liberty judged by another man's conscience? If I partake with thanksgiving, why am I evil spoken of for that which I give thanks? Therefore, whether you eat or drink, or whatsoever else you do, do all in the glory of God. Be without offense to the Jew, and to the Gentiles, and to the church of God. As I also in all things please all men, not seeking that which is profitable to myself, but to many, that they may be saved. Corinthians 1, chapter 11 Be ye followers of me, as I also am of Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that in all things you are mindful of me and keep my ordinances as I have delivered them to you. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of every woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. Every man praying or prophesying with his head covered disgraceth his head. For every woman praying or not prophesying with her head not covered disgraceth her head. For it is all one as if she were shaven. For if a woman be not covered, let her be shorn. But if it be a shame to a woman to be shorn or made bald, let her cover her head. The man indeed ought not to cover his head, because he is the image and glory of God. But the woman is the glory of the man. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. For the man is not created for the woman, but the woman for the man. Therefore ought the woman to have a power over her head, because of the angels. But yet neither is the man without the woman, nor the woman without the man in the Lord. For as the woman is of the man, so also is the man by the woman, but all things of God. You yourselves judge. Doth it become a woman to pray unto God uncovered? Doth not even nature itself teach you that a man indeed, if he nourish his hair, it is a shame unto him? But if a woman nourish her hair, it is glory to her, for her hair is given to her for a covering. But if any man seem to be contentious, we have no such custom, nor the church of God. Now this I ordain, not praising you, that you come together, not for the better, but for the worse. For first of all I hear that when you come together in the church, there are schisms among you, and in part I believe it. For there must be also heresies, that they also, who are approved, be made manifest among you. When you come together in one place, it is not now to eat the Lord's Supper. For every one taketh before his own supper to eat, and one indeed is hungry, and another is drunk. What, have you no houses to eat and to drink in? Or despise ye the church of God, and put them to shame that have not? What shall I say to you? Do I praise you? In this I praise you not. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and said, Take ye and eat, this is my body, which shall be delivered for you. This do for the commemoration of me. In like manner also the chalice, after he had supped, saying, This chalice is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as often as you shall drink, for the commemoration of me. For as often as you shall eat this bread, and drink this chalice, you shall shew the death of the Lord until he come. Therefore, whosoever shall eat this bread or drink the chalice of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man prove himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that chalice. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh judgment to himself not discerning the body of the Lord. Therefore are there many infirm and weak among you, and many sleep. But if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But whilst we are judged, we are chastised by the Lord, that we be not condemned with this world. 
Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. If any man be hungry, let him eat at home, that you come not together unto judgment. And the rest I will set in order when I come. Corinthians 1, chapter 12. Now concerning spiritual things, my brethren, I would not have you ignorant. You know that when you were heathens, you went to dumb idols, according as you were led. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man, speaking by the Spirit of God, saith anathema to Jesus, and no man can say the Lord Jesus, but by the Holy Ghost. Now there are diversities of graces, but the same Spirit. And there are diversities of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but the same God, who worketh all in all. And the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man unto profit. To one indeed by the Spirit is given the word of wisdom, and to another the word of knowledge, according to the same Spirit. To another faith in the same Spirit. To another the grace of healing in one Spirit. To another the working of miracles. To another prophecy. To another the discerning of spirits. To another diverse kinds of tongues to another interpretation of speeches. But all these things one and the same Spirit worketh, dividing to every one according as he will. For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of the body, whereas they are many, yet are one body, so also is Christ. For in one Spirit were we all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, whether bond or free, and in one Spirit we have all been made to drink. For the body also is not one member, but many. And if the foot should say, Because I am not the hand, I am not the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear should say, Because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were the eye, where would you be hearing? If the whole were hearing, where would you be smelling? But now God hath set the members, every one of them, in the body, as it hath pleased him. And if they were all one member, where would be the body? But now there are many members indeed, yet one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I need not thy help, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need for you. Yea, much more those that seem to be the more feeble members of the body are more necessary. And such as we think to be the less honorable members of the body, about these we put more abundant honor, and those that are our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. But our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, giving to that which wanted the more abundant honor, that there might be no schism in the body, but the members might be mutually careful for one another. And if one member suffer any thing, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member glory, all the members rejoice with it. Now you are the body of Christ and members of member. And God indeed hath set some in the church, first apostles, secondly prophets, thirdly doctors, after that miracles, then graces of healings, helps, governments, kinds of tongues, interpretations of speeches. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all doctors? Are all workers of miracles? Have all the grace of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But be zealous for the better gifts, and I shew unto you yet a more excellent way. You've been listening to the first letter to the Corinthians, written by St. Paul, Apostle of Jesus Christ, read by David Battistella.